Welcome back to our science lesson, year two. We're going to continue with looking at plants. The life cycle of a flowering plant follows a specific life cycle. It starts as a seed. They begin their lives as seeds. Seeds are like baby plants. They have a hard outer shell that protects the seed embryo inside. Then we have germination. The seed ends up on the ground. It needs air, water and soil to grow. When a seed begins to grow, this is called germination. The first growth will be some small roots, then the stem will grow. Sprouts or seedlings are when the first signs of life appear above the soil. This is called a sprout or seedling. Finally, the plant becomes a mature plant. The seedling will continue to grow into a full mature plant with leaves, roots and a stem. When it's flowering, the mature plant will grow flowers. Through pollination, the flowers will reproduce seeds. When the seeds end up on the ground, the cycle will begin all over again. Now let's look at something called a photosynthesis. So have you ever noticed that plants need sunlight to live? How can sunlight be a type of food? Well, sunlight is energy and photosynthesis is the process plants use to take the energy from the sunlight it converts carbon dioxide and water into food. Plants need three basic things to live. Water, sunlight and carbon dioxide. So air. Plants breathe carbon dioxide just like we breathe oxygen. When plants breathe carbon dioxide in, they breathe oxygen out for us. Plants are a major source of oxygen on our planet and help keep us alive. We know now that plants use sunlight as energy. They get water from rain, they get carbon dioxide from breathing. The process of taking these three key ingredients and making them into food is called photosynthesis. So how do plants capture sunlight? Plants capture sunlight using a compound called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is green, which is why so many plants appear green. From the study of light, we know that the colour we see is actually the colour of light that is reflected. So chlorophyll actually reflects green light and absorbs blue and red lights. Now we know that plants need sunlight, water and carbon dioxide to live. They take these three components and use chlorophyll to help convert them into food, which they use for energy and oxygen, which they breathe out. And then we use it to live. All plants use photosynthesis, so they all need some sunlight. So what's pollination that we spoke about earlier? Pollination is a very important part of the life cycle of plants. Insects, birds and even bats and the wind take pollen between flowering plants, which means the plants can make seeds and reproduce. So how do bees pollinate? Insects take pollen between flowering plants of the same type. The pollen fertilizes egg cells to make seeds. So we can see this little bee, he likes the bright colors and the smell of the flower and the sugary nectar. Now he's going to go and take some and take it back to the hive. So now he's gonna eat some of the pollen. While eating this uh, flower, some of the pollen has rubbed off on him. Now, at this other flower, the pollen from the first flower will now be fertilized, the egg cells to make the seeds. So he goes from one flower to the other. Now there are other types of pollination. As we saw, the insects, birds, bats, and the wind also take pollen between plants. Why is pollination important? Without pollination, there won't be food and we can't have clothing and shelter and other things like this. Now let's take a look at some interesting facts about plants. We human beings use more than 2,000 different types of plants to create various delicious food items in our meal. Bamboo is an extremely rapid growing plant. In fact, some bamboo varieties can grow almost one meter in a single day. So more than 85% of plant life is found in the ocean. The ginkgo biloba, 
which dates to about 250 million years ago, is the oldest living tree species in the world. It was around when the dinosaurs were around. Tree resin, which is also called amber, once it sets hard, often contains plant materials or tiny insects from the time of the dinosaur. Many plants are carnivorous, like the Venus flytrap, which means that they eat living things. This eats tiny little insects and spiders to gain useful nutrition. An average sized tree can provide wood enough to make 170,000 pencils. Now, there are no flower species that are completely black in colour, nor has anyone ever been able to develop one. Our last interesting fact, strawberries are the only fruit that have seeds on the outside. Now let's finish up by looking at the, how a Venus flytrap works. It's a killer plant. The Venus flytrap is a plant that grows where the soil is poor, so bad soil. To get things it needs to grow, it catches flies. How can it do this with no feet or teeth? So let's take a look. So first of all, the leaves of the plant are traps that can open and close. Inside these traps there's sweet nectar which makes the flies come into the plant. When a fly touches the hairs on the outside of the plant's mouth, it snaps shut. When the fly is trapped inside, it is slowly eaten by the plant. After a few days of the plant eating the fly, it was slowly open, ready to catch more flies and bees and any other insects. I hope you enjoyed the lesson year two. There's so many interesting facts about plants. We'll continue to look at plants in our next lesson, looking at desert plants and ocean plants and how they grow. Until then, take care and I'll see you soon.